Hello and welcome to the library drawing party. Today we're going to be drawing this beautiful sunset. We're going to be using an experimental technique this week. So instead of just using our colored pencils, we're going to do an actual base coat with watercolors. The watercolor set I'm using here just has the standard rainbow colors. You can use whatever colors you'd like. Um, and if you don't have watercolors at home, you can go ahead and use the same sort of process with colored pencils. You'll just use the blending techniques that we've been talking about um, in our previous library drawings, library drawing parties. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to work on is the sky. And I want the sky to be pretty light because I'm going to be adding all of these layers on top of it. So I'm going to start with the blue. And I want to get it really nice and loose. So I'm going to do it in curly cues. Because I want to leave some white for the clouds. And instead of adding paint, I'm going to just go and take some water, which I have off camera. Alright, I have my blue base coat. And then I want to have some red. So I'm going to do red along the horizon line. Then let's have it swoop up. I'm doing like a half moon type shape here. So it goes with our swirls. You can make the sky as smooth or as dramatic as you'd like. If you've seen a really cool sky lately, you can take a picture of it and recreate that here. I'm going to do some more swoops with the orange. I'm going to make sure, because we're trying to get this muted tone. See, I got it really dark. I'm going to make sure I have a lot of water on my brush so that we can easily blend the color in. And we want to still keep some white the clouds. I'm going to actually push some of the orange down into the red so that it keeps it nice and vibrant. Can even add a little touch of red. A little bit goes a long way with watercolor. All right, we have our red, we have our orange. I want to put in a little yellow. You can see in my sample here we have some yellow. I'm not going to try and get it exactly like this because um, every sky is unique and different, but we can still use that rainbow effect. That's so beautiful on a sunset or a sunrise. All right, now we have, it almost looks like fire to me. So, I think it looks cool and dramatic, but I don't quite want a fire. So, <laughs> I'm going to add in some blue, mix that in. I want to get rid of all of the red. I do want... 
to make it a little bit less bright. You can wipe your brush down and you can put some water on your brush. Uh, I think that helped keep it from looking like it was on fire, but I also think I got rid of so much color that it's got a little boring. So I'm going to add a little bit of color back in, not quite as much as I had initially. So I did some orange, I'll do a little bit of red. Can I have it go in the opposite direction too? Too bright? You can add some water and blend it and then it'll tone it down a bit. All right, now we have base color and the colors are still wet. So I'm gonna take this opportunity to do some more swirls. All right. That's pretty good for our base coat. It's not overpowering. The one thing I want to do is I want to add a little bit more yellow in the middle here because this kind of got a little blurry. And add a little bit of blue up top. Alright, that was a lot of blue. You just gotta adjust it as you go along. I'm gonna go off the edges here. Make sure that the whole page is getting covered. You can really do a lot with these water strokes. You can change the direction of the stroke and adjust the coloring. Okay, I'm adding a bit more yellow. Alright, I'm pretty happy with my sky's base coat. Now let's do that in reverse for the lake. All right, I want to start the lake because I want it to be peaceful. I'm going to start just putting water over the paper to get it nice and wet. This way we'll be able to blend the colors without putting too much ink in one spot. Since the paper was already wet with water, that little dab, I was able to go over the whole thing. Okay. So I have my lake base now to get the um, to get the reflection We'll take a little bit of color and then let's have it reflect. And I want the lines to be horizontal to show that the water is peaceful. The peaceful water generally has horizontal line. Also has a nice contrast to our um, sky which has a lot of diagonal lines. 
So it helps emphasize the separation between the two places. Okay, I have red. Let's add a bit of orange. Make sure you have your brush nice and wet. You want to keep it about the same as the sky. So whatever color you put in the sky, you want that to be the same for your lake. Okay, I'm going to put some yellow. yellow because we already have the blue it's going to already turn a little bit green and that's what we want and I'm going to have really watery a bit more blue just to help emphasize that we're looking at water all right so we have our sky which now that it's starting to dry you can see that the colors are really starting to take shape and then we have our lake so now what we want to work on is the hills and the shrubbery in front. So let's do the hills first. So this horizon line is going to be green. And this we want our brush to be as dry as possible because we really want that green color to show up. And our paper is already wet. So as long as there's some pigment on the brush, it should show up on the page without having to add water. Okay, I have this hill in the very distance drawn out. Then I want to add this tree structure and this I want it to be loose I'm trying to go for an impressionist style here now we can see that it left a little bit of white space over here so this white space you will need to put a little bit of um, water because there's no water already so go really light on the water because we want to get it as vibrant as possible so you can see that's really starting to be green and this is our base coat we'll add the deeper colors later on we just want to get that general appearance of green and then we'll put some green in the water to reflect it. And just paint right on over everything. All right, now, once we clean our brush, we'll take our blue and really emphasize those shadows. So we have our horizon line drawn out with the hills. So 
Okay, next step, you want to make sure you clean your brush for this part because we're going to be going from the dark color to the shrubs in the front. Once your brush is clean, you know, take some of that green and you're going to start making the shrubbery. You want this to be all different heights and textures because it's supposed to be so many different kinds of plants. When we start drawing with the colored pencils, we'll add in some more texture. But we want to use a pretty dry brush for this because we want to see the strokes and we want the color to be deep. And then it fades out as it gets further away because the majority of the leaves would be towards the bottom. And then there would be a couple leaves out towards the edge, but not nearly as many as the bottom. The other thing we want to do is take our blue and put some blue in the bottom for extra shadow. Emphasize the depth of color. And then because we don't want it to be all blue, it is supposed to be green shrubbery. We can go over that blue and add some more green. And the combination of the two will give us that nice pine shrubbery green that we're looking for. Okay. So we have our base coat complete. So that concludes our watercolor portion of the drawing. Welcome back to Library Drawing Party. I actually decided to leave the base coat that we did for our drawing out overnight so it can totally dry. Uh, you probably could wait just the 10 minutes but um, if you leave it out overnight, then you're definitely going to have dry paper, which is what you're going to need for our next step, which is going to be to add the color pencils. So you can leave it like this if you're happy with it. I'm actually pretty happy with this, but I want to add a few more details like we did in our sample drawing. So the first thing I want to do is I want to emphasize this horizon line. So I'm going to take my dark green and I'm going to push with the full force of the pencil along the horizon line so that it can get really dark and emphasize how far away that is across the lake. And then I'm going to fade out towards the top of our watercolor mark for the green trees. This adds a little bit of depth of color, but since we already have the green base coat, underneath we won't have any white. We'll just have the watercolor green. Okay, and then for over here, and this sample drawing, I did some cross hatching, so I did some lines, straight lines going diagonally, and then I did straight lines going diagonally the opposite way. This was to help emphasize the texture and how the trees will be going in all different directions. And then I'm going to add just some preform lines too so it doesn't have too much of a pattern. And 
blend that in a bit. Okay. Now, I want to do a little bit of reflection with the green. I don't want to do too much green because it's already a lot of green in our reflection. So I'm going to use the blue. And with the lake, we want this to be a peaceful lake, so our lines are going horizontally, mimicking the, hor the horizon line. And this just adds a little bit of texture, gives a little bit of a darker color. Okay, the next step, I'm going to work with the same two colors. So I'm going to work on our shrubs down here. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to draw a really dark line on the bottom of the page. because our light source is coming from above. And then I'm gonna do some more cross hatching. So I'm doing some diagonal lines now, and then I'm gonna do some diagonal lines going the opposite way. Let me extend that out a bit for some of these pieces that are not quite so close. Then let me blend the horizon or the horizontal line at the bottom with some of that cross hatching to make it a little bit smoother. Let's add some unique lines. This is supposed to be our leaves, our stems. You can add some leaves. I'm going to add in a few circles. You could try stippling too, which is where you just make dots with your pencil. I'm going to do a few more circles to help mix it up. Especially if you make a strong stem, it might be nice to have some leaves coming off of that stem. Okay, I'm going to take that same blue that we were working with for our horizon line. I'm going to add a bit of that, or for a reflection, I'm going to add a bit of that into our shrubbery. Hope bring out the deep rich green okay so we did our trees we did our shrubs let's work on the clouds now if you have white paint at home white acrylic paint you can go ahead and use that if you don't have white acrylic paint you can try using white correction fluid from your office supplies. So I'm going to be using that now. And you just want to have some unique clouds.
You can have longer clouds. You can combine them. You can draw shapes, hearts, however you want the clouds to look. And then, since we reflect everything in the water, let's put some clouds in the water. But you're going to want to keep these clouds going horizontal as opposed to our diagonal clouds so that you can still maintain that peaceful, calm lake that we were working so hard to create. Okay, now that we have some clouds, let's go in and add some colored pencil to that to help emphasize all the different colors we put in and help blend it together. I'm going to go right by the edges of the white and use our colored pencil to go around the edges and help blend them in to our watercolor color. If you want the tone to be muted, you can omit the colored pencil, but I like the bright colors. Helps make a more dramatic sky. Okay, add in the blue. Let me do some yellow. What's nice about having the painting underneath is that the color that you're using blends really well into the background. We, don't, we can save some steps that way. All right, I'm going to add some orange now. You can also try using your finger to rub the color in. Okay, this one is a little less blended, so I'm going to add some of the yellow on top. I'm going to use some of my eraser. Okay. That looks pretty good. Alright, and then finally let's take the red. Add some red back in. I'm going to put in some red highlights by our horizon line trees. Okay, so we have our sky. Again, you can make the sky look however you want. If you saw a cloud formation that you really like, you can create that here. But whatever you're doing in the sky, you're gonna want to reflect in the water. So I'm gonna put a little bit more blue towards the edges by our shrubs here. Then put in some orange. Some yellow. Some red. There's our sunset. Thank you for tuning in to Library Drawing Party. We hope to see you again next week on our Facebook page at 7 o'clock p.m. And keep being creative.